Hi, I'm Joe Roth. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and informing people about our life-saving mission. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's credit unions, banking you can trust, the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities, United Water, making the planet sustainable is the best job on earth, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community. Additional support provided by the 2014 Special Olympics USA Games. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go you right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Carmen Pizarro, yes. who is an alumna with Community Education Center. It is an honor to have you with us. And you're here to tell your story yes. about, um, in fact, you've had an interesting background. Uh, you spent uh, five years incarcerated. Incarcerated. Um, but you came out of that situation and you were connected to the Bo Robinson Treatment and Assessment Center, yes. which is part of the Community Education Center's world. When you were incarcerated, describe that situation. Um, um, actually, um, I was incarcerated twice. Um, I went, my first time I went into incarcerated, I was only 21 years old. Mm. I was um, young and um, I was basically very, influence and you know at that point in time um, I didn't get the opportunity to participate in um, programs like CEC I was actually I came home from the Edna Man Correctional Institution so unfortunately I didn't get the time to prepare myself to go back out into society so at the first sign of opposition I kind of came back to my old lifestyle which um, resulted in me returning Daily. Um, yes, and um, was that natural? Did it, I don't mean to say natural, mm -hmm. but but the idea of dealing drugs, did that seem like a an option that was just too easy, um, accessible? I don't know what the right word is. Coming from um, you grew from grew up in Asbury Park, right? Yeah, I grew up in Asbury Park, and actually, I come from a very dysfunctional family. And um, both of my parents, they had me. Uh, my mother was fourteen. My dad was sixteen when um, they'd had me and I, my mom actually gave me away to my aunt, unbeknown to her, my aunt was a heroin addict. Oh so um, the environment that I grew up, drugs were something that was always available. So within that environment, unfortunately it was normal and it was natural. So when um, I ended up in foster care and I ran into the streets um, to sell drugs um, was definitely, I guess, an easier option for me because it was always available. So, Carl, let me ask you this. And we've interviewed several folks who we've met through community education centers. And I'm always curious, which is, in fact, uh, an organization committed to alternative, mm -hmm. yes. the alternative to the traditional incarceration system, to, to, to education, to training, to preparing people for life. What, not, not that it's any one thing, what what has it been that has caused you to turn your life around? Because right now, mm -hmm. you're a successful business person. Tell folks what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, I own a hair salon in Asbury Park. You want to plug it? Go ahead. Yes. The Doobie Shop, 413 Bond Street in Wait, Asbury do it again. Park. The Doobie Shop? Yes, where we do authentic Dominican doobies. <laughs> and I, I stepped on, on the uh, address. Go ahead. 413 Bond Street, <laughs> Asbury Park. <laughs> How much do you love doing it? Um, I, I love it because um, I'm able to take, um, you know, I believe in God, and I believe that God gives each person certain gifts. And um, I was given the ability that I'm a good people person, I'm able to, 
do business, and I'm able to take my gift and do something positive with it. I'm able to give a job. Right now, I have nine employees. Wow. They're able to provide for their families and give their families a better quality of life. I'm able to help women, you know, build their self-esteem up by making themselves look pretty and feel good about themselves. And those are, like, one of the, like, greatest rewards of my job. You spent those five years in prison. Was it in prison or was it at the Bo Robinson facility that you began to see that there was another way? Um, actually, um, from the moment that I went into the prison my second time, I realized that um, unless I changed certain things about my life, that this was going to become one of the places that I was going to spend the rest of my life, and I didn't want that. Um, but I also didn't know how to change. You know, for me, it, it took a spirit, spiritual awakening, and um, I asked God to come into my heart and to help me change. Um, he used outlets like CEC to provide me with the necessary yes, to provide me with the necessary tools that I needed for me to be able to make certain changes of my life. Because people, um, a lot of times, people don't realize, but people that grew up in these urban communities and come from these dysfunctional families, they, um, you know, they're expected to go to jail, you know, and are penalized for the crimes, and they're expected to come home and do the right thing. But some people never did the right thing and don't even know what the right thing is. Even if they you know? want to. Exactly. So it's like about educating people. You know, that's why I do take the time to go back into Bull Robinson, and I do take the time and try to t speak to women and educate them and prepare. A simple things about how do you communicate with an employer when you go to a job and what do you wear how do you call them back and speak to them on the phone don't know that you know how do you, how do you, how do you communicate in a job interview what to wear in a job interview what not to say in a job interview keep going talk uh, about some skills um let's um create an email People what? don't even have no com computer skills. But you have to upload a resume and you have to email it and you don't even have an email. So these are little things that, uh, whereas though normal society takes for granted, and it's like, oh, everybody knows that. Little kids know that. But yeah, for a person that has been in a drug and criminal lifestyle all their life, that's something foreign to them. How about listening skills? Exactly. Um, to be able to cope with sometimes, you know, like um, one of my old counselors used to tell me, just because you're ready to play fair now doesn't mean that the world is going to be fair with you. So you have to be able to deal with people that might not be so nice, you know, and you have to be able to cope and still be able to effectively communicate with them. As opposed to first become, time you come up against that? Exactly. You go back to your old behaviors. Which and could now, be? You can go back to being argumentative, you can go back to fighting, and then you're going to go back to prison, you know, only because you lack certain skills. What's it like for you when you know that you're reaching, I'm sure you talk to young women and young men, but mm -hmm. particularly young women. Carmen, what's it like for you when you know you are connecting with reaching a young woman, woman who is at some sort of crossroads? I don't want to make it overly dramatic, but because it's got to be constant opportunities and temptations to to falter and whatever mm -hmm. but when you know you're connecting and you have an opportunity to make a difference what's that like for you um to me it's like um to me it feels like i don't know um td jake said that when you're when you're walking Who's in the this? club td jakes um, are you you're not, now you're gonna date me you're like right now are you gonna make me feel so old <laughs> By naming someone, who is that? No, T.D. Jakes is the um, pastor, Pastor T.D. Jakes. Oh, I thought you were going to name a rapper that I didn't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. T.D. Jakes um, said that um, when you're walking in your purpose, you'll know it because you, ha you get a natural high. And um, when I'm able to connect with young ladies that are know are heading in the same path mm -hmm. that I've been through, and I'm able to show that not only, like, I know where you're coming from, I can identify with you because I've been there. And to see, like, when they, like, um, it's a difference when someone else speaks to them and when someone who knows what your pain is, what your struggles is, what your oppositions is, because it's like a more intimate connection with them. And, you know, it's like there is a more credibility there. And I'm able to show them, I'm, I'm able to give them some sort of hope that, you know what, if she could do it, I can do it too, you know? And that's, to me, like, like that's the greatest reward. Um, you know, oftentimes the uh, justice system, women are double penalized, you know what I'm saying? The way our society is set up, it's like women go away for crimes and it's like um, not only are they being um, punished for the crimes they committed, but at the same time society kind of forgets about them. The way the justice system is set up, it's mostly geared to providing services and opportunities for men, ex-offenders, not for women, you know? And to me, like, it's crucial to be a voice for women because, I mean, right now, currently in the Enderman Correctional Facility, which is the only prison that we have. Yes, for women, 
Um, there's 700 and. 80 something women there and these women also need services too. These women also need to be taught certain skills and unfortunately everything is so limited when it comes to the women. You're an advocate. I am because I am, I am one of them women and I, and um, I want to show they're giving us if they give us the opportunities and the resources that we can change. Who's your role model? You were telling me before we got in here. Um, you watch something? I thought when I asked you what your favorite TV show, you're going to say one on one on public television, <laughs> but you didn't say that, did you? No, I said well, um, being Mary Jane because she's a woman and she's successful, <laughs> she's independent, and she's single, you know, and she shows that, you know, we are capable of doing things and becoming successful. You know, a lot of people watching you thinking the same thing about you right now. And I hope so, because I, especially like the ladies, because I want them all to see that they can do it, that they can believe in themselves. And if you work hard, you know, you can take a bad situation and transform it and, be, and can be a testimony to someone else. Last question. Yeah. What do you owe? I owe to give back and to leave, and to leave a positive impact and a new legacy for my new generations to follow. Unfortunately, my parents were never able to give them that opportunity, so I want to leave my generation a positive legacy to follow. We wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. You're going to be all right. Yeah, thank You're you. a leader. Thank you. Okay, you come back and visit us? Yes. <laughs> okay. Stay right there. Thank you. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you very much. If you would like more information on this program, or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Scott Witherspoon is Senior Vice President and Chief Credit Officer, Affinity Federal Credit Union. Good to see you, Scott. Good to be here. Thank you, Steve. And by the way, credit union, for those who don't know, is? Yes, credit unions are cooperatives owned by the members as opposed to public companies with shareholders. You're big on financial education. We've talked about this right before we got in here. What yes. is it and why is it so important? Financial education is critically important. A great example, uh, we provide mortgage financing for home buyers, including first-time home buyers. And for many of them, it's the biggest investment, single investment they'll ever make in their mm -hmm. lives. And so we think it's critically important to educate them and answer their questions and make sure they understand the financial responsibility they're taking on and making sure they can handle the financial responsibility they're assuming. But what happens, say someone um, you know, is trying to buy a home. Huge investment, right? Huge. Biggest one in their life? Usually, yes. And they don't know much about mortgages. Right. They, so in terms of financial education, they don't have it, they have bad information. What's at stake? So I think what's at stake, uh, and we saw this through the financial crisis, I think we as a financial industry have a responsibility to educate people, uh, to make them understand what size home and what size mortgage they can afford comfortably within their financial wherewithal. And I think it's a responsibility to do that. So they make wise choices uh, on what type of mortgage products to take and what type of programs to move into. Now you talk about the financial crisis of 2008, if yes. you will, right? The fallout from that, the government reaction to that has had what impact on banking regulations as it relates sure. to credit unions? I think both the, uh, the CFPB and the Dodd-Frank Act and CFP the, impact, uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Board Go ahead. have come out with a lot of rules to protect the consumer. Fortunately for credit unions, credit unions re uh, responded in a very responsible way through the crisis. And I think, quite frankly, uh, it will be relatively easier for credit unions to uh, be able to comply with the new rules and regulations because they've been responsible to their borrowers throughout this entire financial cycle. It's interesting uh, about credit unions because one of the things I was reading that, that you guys are involved in, and I thought, what is this whole thing about community bulletin boards? What is a community bulletin board and, and how does that impact the average consumer. Sure. So because the credit unions are owned by members, we have within each of our branches, we have a footprint of 15 branches here in New Jersey. And within that branch network, we have community bulletin boards in each one, where different uh, members, existing members of the credit union can post their business cards. So if you came in to conduct business at our branch and you needed a CPA to do your taxes this year, or you were looking for a snowplow removal company uh, given the winter this year, or you're looking for a pet sitter, 
or a house cleaner, whatever the service is, we think it's important to match and network the businesses within the local communities we serve. So we find it's a great opportunity uh, for businesses to exchange or pick up each other's business cards. We also use it uh, for the real estate community. And coming back to the first time home buyers, we like to match up after we've educated first time home buyers with realtors to assist them after we can pre-qualify them for a mortgage to help them go out and find the home of their dreams. When people use the term credit union, <clears throat> you're out, you're talking to people. Do you find that most know what it means? No, I think, uh, you know, the, the very word credit, uh, we, we have lots of money to lend. We want to lend. We want to help both individuals and we want to help businesses uh, in the markets we serve. Our mission statement at Affinity is basically to improve the financial lives of our members and the communities we serve. And we think it's fundamentally important uh, to be actively involved in providing credit, whether it's for the individuals on their consumer needs or mortgage needs, or whether it's for businesses, small and mid-sized businesses. Businesses are what drives the U.S. economy, and it's what will drive the economy back to recovery is the growth and success of small business. I talk about that in 2014 and beyond. What do you see? We've asked all sorts of folks in the financial community what they see, and prognosticating is, is a tricky business at best. Sure. How optimistic are you about the movement of the economy and the movement of credit, if you will, and the, um, what it means in terms of business activity? Well, I'm very optimistic about what it means for credit. I, we have money to lend, and we think it's important to get that money into the hands of small and middle market businesses. Uh, whether they need a line of credit for working capital, or they need term loans to buy equipment or other assets, or whether they want to take advantage of the low interest rate environment and buy real estate that they may be leasing right now. It's a great time to be an owner of real estate, given the relative It's a great low. time? Sure. Why? Absolutely. Re interest rates are still at historic lows. Uh, we may never see these rates again as we look back over time. So I think it's a wonderful time for businesses. Devil's to advocate, as prices rise, as, as real estate prices rise, someone might say, really, now? Now's a good time, you say? Sure. I think, um, uh, I think back to when I bought my first condominium, I think my mortgage rate was probably north of 12% in wow. the low teens, uh, dating myself a little bit. But I think if we look at the interest rate environment today on a historic perspective, I think it's a wonderful time for both homeowners, uh, particularly first-time homeowners, and for businesses to lock in on fixed-rate mortgages. Is, is interest rates, from your point of view, or what the interest rate is at a particular point in, point in time, the most important indicator or factor in what drives the economy? I think it's one factor. I think a, another contributing factor would be the confidence level of employers to hire or to right. invest, to deploy capital, to invest in new equipment or expand. So I, I look at the hiring of small businesses, of hiring of employees to be a critical uh, indicator as to the growth and success coming out of a recession. Before I let you out of here, I know you have an initiative in cooperation with the CPA Society of New Jersey? Yes. What C is that? So we work with the New Jersey Society of CPAs, and CPAs can be a wonderful source of not only referral business for the financial community, but more importantly, we work closely with them coming back to that education. We talk to the CPAs regularly for financial information on our borrowers, and we think they have as much responsibility of counseling them as we do from a financial perspective. So we have a very close re working relationship with the CPA community and consider them to be a critical partner uh, in the process. Scott Witherspoon with, the, with Affinity Federal Credit Union. I want to thank you for joining us. I okay. appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Very educational. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this on One on One. Thank you. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Peter Rooney is the chair of the New Jersey Sharing Network Foundation Board. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We are pleased to be partners with the New Jersey Sharing Network. And um, we've been talking to some folks about uh, this very important issue of organ and tissue donation. Talk about this from your perspective. By the way, throughout the entire program, you're going to see 
the uh, New Jersey Sharing Network website up. Go on the website. Find out important information. This series is dedicated to dealing with the myths, the misconceptions, and giving out important information uh, about this issue. You have a personal connection. Not, you're not just the chair. But you have a personal connection. Explain it. I do, yes. My, in 2001, my father, who was a, um, a diabetic patient for most of his life, he, uh, he experienced renal failure, chronic kidney disease. Um, and he, he had troubles, and, and ultimately, speaking to his nephrologist, we, we learned that uh, he would need dialysis, and ultimately a transplant Is that your dad? We're looking to sustain right his there. life. That's, that's my dad, yeah. That's us out fishing, right? So, uh, you know, we had, we, we, we had a love for many things, and, and um, you know, unfortunately, uh, in 2001, when we became sick and went on dialysis, dialysis affects people in, in many different ways, emotionally and physically, uh, and it's a tough time. And, and what we learned um, at that time when he, when he would need a transplant is, um, is that my dad was very special, right? My dad was a blood type O negative, which- O negative. O negative, which meant he was a universal donor. He could give to anybody, but he could only receive from other O negatives, uh, which ruled out donation from anybody in his family. Um, so we had to go the route of, of donation and, and look for and, and hope and pray for answers. What did your dad do for a living? He was a firefighter, Milburn S firefighter for 32 years. Saving other people's lives. Saving other people's lives. On the job, they called my father the book. Um, they called him that because he, he liked to uh, work at the dispatch station yeah. and answer the phone and, and receive the call for help from others. Right. So, uh, so he, he spent his Little time. Kind of pictures from the that, place that, he worked, right? That, that's it. You right. know, him and his platoon would be there and... Um, you know, they get the call to help others, um, like any, any first responder. They race off to help people that they didn't know, that were in harm's way, and many times uh, facing life and death circumstances. Right. Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately, after uh, a number of years on dialysis and, and being on the waiting list, uh, my father's call for help went unanswered. There was no donor that matched up with your dad. My dad, um, unfortunately, didn't progress, you know, you know, the way that he needed to. The donor, you know, there was no match. We ran out of time uh, for, for my father, unfortunately. What impact did, it have, did that have on you in terms of your connecting with this organization, the Sherry Network? Well, I wanted to do more. You know, when we found out that my dad needed uh, a kidney and we couldn't donate ourselves, I wanted to reach out. I looked for organizations and found New Jersey Sharing Network. Um, I, I reached out to them, I went to the organization and said, how can I get involved, help me understand and what can I do? And, and they welcomed me with open arms. It's a tremendous organization, a uh, nonprofit organization, and their mission is to save and enhance lives. This is my father's work, saving mm -hmm. and enhancing lives. And I thought, what better way to help him and help others uh, than to join this organization? So I was very fortunate uh, and the staff allowed me to um, bring me on as a, as a volunteer, train me and then uh, sent me out to, to help spread word of, uh, of their mission. That's what you're doing right now. A couple of programs I want to talk about there. Um, high School Heroes, what is that? Well, we have over 400 volunteers in, in central and northern New Jersey, and, and we, we activate them in a number of different programs. A portion of those go into the high schools. We help fulfill the, the state mandate on educating high school students about organ donation. Uh, we've recently extended that to colleges as well. Um, and really the, 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 uh, the high school and college age, age folks are, are really ambassadors of our message in helping us getting the word out there. What are some of the most common myths, Peter, about organ and tissue donation that we need to dispel right now? There are a lot of myths out there. I, I think um, the, the one that I hear all the time is, if I'm an organ donor, they're not going to save me, or they're mm. not going to put medical treatment um, to work for me. And, and, and that's not true. And in fact, um, you know, the surgery, t you know, the team that is working on, on, the, on the critical Ill, critically ill patient is separate from the transplant team. And, and in fact, they do everything that they can to preserve mm. uh, that person. And, and to, to be able to give the gift of life is, is very rare. That's why it's important for us to get the, the message out there. Speaking of getting the message out there, I remember our, our senior producer of this series, Jackie Cook uh, is also a reporter, went out there for the 5K New Jersey Sharing Network race, and we're actually going to show some video. Jackie did a great report. It was one of the first times you really got to see the enthusiasm at the race, and, and you raised a fair amount of money for the, for the organization as well. 
as we're seeing the video of this race, talk about why it's so important. This is a tremendous event, and it's unlike any other 5K run walk event. It's a, it's a, it's a celebration of life, first of all. A celebration of life. Celebration of life. It, it's a collection of, of donors, donor recipients, family, friends, who all come together. This past year, we were very fortunate. We had over 6,000 friends, family. 6,000? 6,000 people this year. We raised over $750,000. Well, where do these people come from? And who are they that they would come to this one day to celebrate? We have a lot of special peop people in our family. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they all want to be a part of this. They do. They do. I think, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, we have a lot of people who are connected to the cause. And I think the people that inspire me the most are the donor families. They Talk come here. They, they share their stories. These are people who have lost their loved ones, mothers, fathers, um, children. And they are passionate about the cause and, and celebrating life so that the people that they lost can be remembered. It's, it's really motivating. You know, it's so interesting to me, Peter. It's often said that it isn't just what happens to us that matters. It's how we choose to deal with it. You didn't necessarily have to after you lost your dad. You know, obviously, you had a very close connection. You just look at your pictures together and you can see. You talked about fishing just being one of the things you shared together. You didn't have to do what you did. You chose to do what you did. What you do with it is what matters most. What do you think you owed your dad? What you owe your dad today? Uh, you know, I, I look at it as I'm, I'm continuing his work. Mm. I'm continuing helping other people. And, and that's what he devoted his life to. And, and, and at the New Jersey Sharing Network, I'm able to continue that, that mission. How rewarding? Oh, it's exceptional. Um, the people that I meet, right? When I look into a face of a mother of a 10-year-old son, who had a heart transplant, and, and she looks at him. Or I, or I see, um, you know, someone who, you know, giving his, at one of our, our talks who um, received a liver, and he, look, and he tells a story about looking at, around at, at his Thanksgiving room table, right, at his family, and he gets to be there. That's priceless. We are honored to be your partners, um, be your partner. Peter Rooney, Chair, New Jersey Sharing Network Foundation Board. Um, we look forward to continue to help. The cause goes on. Okay. Thank you. I want to thank you very much. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's Credit Unions, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey Natural Gas, United Water, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. If you're worried about how the Affordable Care Act affects your Medicare coverage, here are the facts. The Affordable Care Act closes the Medicare donut hole and lowers the cost of prescription drugs for many seniors. Free preventive services are expanded and copays are eliminated for yearly checkups and important procedures like mammograms. To get all of the facts for free on health care reform in New Jersey, call the New Jersey Citizen Action Helpline.